Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this uh, tutorial video, I want to talk about the aim constraint. So, um, the aim constraint is basically a way of having one object point at another. So, I'm actually going to just point out how powerful the aim constraint is uh, compared to other methods. So, I'm just going to create a cone. I'm also going to create a uh, what do I want? A null object. That'll be fine. And on the cone. What you could typically do to make one object point at another is use the um, target tag. So we can add the target tag there. And in the tag, it's asking for a target object. So I'm going to put my null in there. And then I'm going to move the null. And as you can see, the position of that's flipped. And if I move it again, it flips again. And as you can see, our cone doesn't look like it's pointing at our null yet. But if I move this up, you can see that it's moving in relation to the null. Now, to make it easier to visualize, I'm actually going to go to the cone and orientate it on the plus Z, and then the point of the cone should be pointing at the null object. So that's pretty much how it works, and wherever you go, this points at it. Great. And you've also got the object in the target to ignore the pitch, so you can turn that off, and that means when you move it up and down, it'll ignore that but it will still point to it when you move it sort of left and right. Okay, so that's okay, but it's not particularly very powerful. And, you know, there's certain things that you may want to do that you just won't be able to do with the target tag. So I was looking at something the other day, and it's this. Um, this is a film that is on Netflix called uh, I Am Mother. And what I'm interested in is these actuators here underneath the head. So if I just play this, you can see that these things are moving. They're kind of actuators that are moving in and out of each other, and they sort of work with each other. I've basically mocked up a version of that very, very quickly. It's just sort of like the torso and the head. And like I said, it took me all of five minutes very, very quick. Uh, very quickly I modeled that. There we go. You can uh, you can stop laughing now. But um, so basically, what I've got is a uh, is a neck object with a head attached to it, and that's just so that I can move the neck and the head will move with it. If I want, I can actually move the head independently of the neck, like this. And I've got a body as well, so that can move independently of the neck and the head. And then I've got these objects underneath. Um, these rods that are actually going to be our actuators. And if I hide the neck and the head and the body, you can see what we've got there. I've just got these objects. Apart from that, I've just got a scene, which is just a simple corner and some lights and stuff. So, uh, yeah. But what we're going to want to do so we can get this kind of thing, and if I zoom forward, we should have another... In fact, I think the shot I had was probably the best example of that, yeah. What we want to do is get these things to point at each other at all times and that's how you kind of make this kind of thing up so that's what we're going to do with these objects and you can't really do that with the target tag because you don't really get the option to control what axis it's going to be looking along whereas the aim constraint tag does so let's just uh, let's get into it and set that up so what I'd typically do is I'd choose the this upper rod and the pivot matters here and uh, we'll come to that in a, in a minute, but um, let's set it up first and get it working, then I'll explain about why the pivots matter. And if we uh, actually look at this, you can see that what I've done is actually created a sphere and then just cut off the bottom and extruded, extruded the bottom out, basically, to make this shape. And uh, uh, the same with these bottom ones as well, but I've made these slightly thicker. So one will slide inside the other. Okay, so this upper rod, what I want to do is right-click, go to the Character Tags menu, and then choose Constraint. And if we choose this constraint, uh, we have a load of options as to what kind of constraint that we're going to have. And I'm going to have the Aim Constraint. That's the one we're interested in. And as soon as you click this button on, you'll see there's nothing at the top. Click the Aim Constraint, and now we've got an Aim tab. So if I go into this, we've got a load of options. We've got the Strength the strength of the effect. And then we've got this offset. Uh, we don't actually need an offset, so I'm gonna close that. 
and then we've got the constraint and you get the uh, option of whether you want to constrain for the heading pitch or banking I'm going to want all of them so we can close this as well and then we've got the targets as well and you can actually add multiple targets which is another advantage over the target tag so for example if I had a, created a null and put the null in there as a target and then created another uh, target like this and create another null and put a separate one in here it would try and work out the average between these two targets and it would point to somewhere in the middle of these two values so you can see already how it's much much more powerful than the uh, target tag um, but we're only going to be interested in one target so basically I'm going to get this object to point at this object and this object to point at this object so we're going to have a couple of um, aim constraints pointed at each other so for the upper rod I've got my target tag and we're going to need a target well that target is going to be this object which is the lower rod right so let's choose the tag on the upper right upper upper rod right even and drag our lower into this now already you can see that it's not pointing in the right direction we want this to be pointed at this so we can actually choose the axis which it's pointing at so if I choose plus y you can see that it's uh, the orientation is correct but it's just pointing in the wrong direction so we need minus y there we go and now it's pointing at this object here so now we need to do the same thing for this object so selecting this object oh, which is lower rod right we're going to do the same thing right click character tag constraint aim constraint and then we're going to need to choose a target so that'll be this upper rod right and we can drag that into there and again it's not pointing in the uh, correct uh, direction so this time if I was to do the same so this minus y it would be pointing away from it so obviously we want upper y and now they're pointing at each other now there's a slight offset there but when we uh, come out of it, it it snaps to where it's meant to be okay all very well and good we just need to do the same thing with these two on the other side now so again upper rod left let's just do this quickly constraint aim uh, we need the target so that'll be this lower rod, rod left again it's not pointing the right way so that'll be minus y jobs are good in. and it's just the lower one now character tag constraint uh, aim and we want to upper rod left drag that in there and again that'll be plus y so now everything's pointing in the right direction and where it should be and if I actually grab this upper uh, constraint now you will see that they follow each other and that can slide in and out so I'm just gonna go back to our good position okay so let's unhide our other objects so now we've got these two things if I grab my head uh, my neck even and rotate it not a lot happens with our sort of actuators because they're not following the head so we need to actually connect these now I could do this with constraints but um, we're just looking at the aim constraint in this tut tutorial so I'm gonna take the easy route and basically I'm going to make our upper rods, so these two, um, a child of the head object. So I'm going to put those as a child of the head. And these lower rods, obviously we want them to stay with the body when the body moves. So I'm going to take the lower rods and make them a child of the body. So now we should have a scenario where if I move the body so let's just grab the body and rotate it those actuators move with it and the same with the head as well if I grab the head and move that these actually work with that and also in this direction as well uh, should have made those a little bit longer maybe but maybe we could put a limit on that or something so you can't look too far up but you can see how that works okay so we should probably talk about pivots because that's really really important when it comes to aim constraints so I'm just gonna hide the uh, 
hide the neck and obviously we want to see the upper rods so let's turn those back on and we can hide the body as well and we also want to see the lower rods um, so I just want to talk about how important uh, pivots are okay so this let's choose this one here as you can see this is pointing to this object along the minus y direction so this is its local direction if you like and the pivot is really really important because this object here is pointing at the pivot of this object here so if I grab this object and actually press this button here this is uh, the enable axis so it basically allows you to move the axis of a polygon object without moving the object itself so you're basically changing the position of the pivot of the object and not the object and if I move this away you can see now that this is pointing at this pivot so it's really really important that the pivot of the object that you're pointing at is actually in a proper location uh, location that makes sense so if I come out of this now I can move this object but it's not quite working because the pivot of the object isn't in the correct place now this may actually be really really handy um, there may be something that you're trying to achieve that um, requires you to move the pivot to a different location um, there's plenty of use case scenarios where that could be the case I mean this this object here could be bigger you could have something coming out the side and then another cylinder connected to it and you'd want this to point to that part of the object so there's plenty of um, use cases where that may be something that you'd want to do but in this case we need to make sure our pivot is in the correct location so that's just something to bear in mind um, the pivot for me was already in the right uh, location because when I created the object I basically made a sphere so this pivot would have been right in the middle of the sphere and then I just extruded uh, a bunch of polygons at the end in fact what I did was I cut out a load of polygons and uh, grabbed the edge and just uh, held control and moved those edges up to to copy them so that's how I achieved that so again that's something to keep in mind um, uh, be mindful of your pivots when you're doing this kind of thing but as it stands for what we wanted to do this is exactly worked out great for us and you can see these working as intended okay that's me done for this tutorial guys i hope that was helpful to uh, someone somewhere and uh yeah that's it for my viewers on youtube please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials you can check out content at digitalmeet.uk where you can filter my tutorials by category and vote in the poll for upcoming tutorials you can also follow me on social media links in the description and the footer of my website if you'd like to help support digital meet this can be done via patreon or the support page on the website but if you want to help Digital Meet keep going and bag yourself some extra in-depth tutorial content, the Prime membership is available for purchase in the store. This will grant you access to the Prime membership area of the website. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.